I'm Jake Spell, and today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the expression of mineral content through core sample behavior. So we think that by examining a few core samples that vary in mineralogy, and by testing those with zeta potential, ion exchange, and fluid flow, that we'll be able to provide information that will help incorporate mineralogy into computer simulations that are often used for hydrocarbon reservoirs. So the first step in this process was to look at the mineralogy and obtain data by searching through various amounts of literature on Nankai, Shale, Boise Sandstone, and Texas Cream Limestone, and use this information as a reference for our experiments and some questions that we wanted to answer. So the first thing we were looking at was the ion exchange capacity, and we wanted to know if it correlates at all with the mineralogy of those samples. So the ion exchange process started by grinding up the samples and putting them in a um, NaCl solution and another solution of mixed salts and aging them over a period of 10 days and after that period we filtered out the rocks and we basically ran through a uh, ICS machine to see what ions were swapped between these samples and, and what quantities they were swapped. So over here we have our ion exchange charts. Um, as you can see the Nankai obviously had the highest amount of ions exchanged with the solutions and then up next was the shale. That correlates with the amount of clay content in those two samples. Those two happen to have the highest amount of clay, and so we think that that is the reason that they were able to exchange ions um, a little bit more. Next up, we were looking at the Kepler desaturation properties of the rocks and seeing if there was any way to correlate that with our previous data on the ion exchange. Um, basically, by saturating our samples, we ran them through a centrifuge, and we looked at see how much water was retained after a certain amount of force was applied. So the Texas cream limestone actually retained the most water, but it's about 99% calcite and contains very little clay. The reason we think that is, is because the interconnectivity of those pore spaces within the rock. Basically the, um, the low connectedness of the pores doesn't allow fluid to flow through it very easily. Next up was the Berea. It retained the second most amount of water, and um, finally was the Boise. Now the Berea did contain a little bit more clay content than the Boise, and we believe that is the reason why it um, retained more water. So if there was a link between the two, capillary and ion exchange, we believe it would be in the mineralogy, uh, more specifically clay content of those rocks. Uh, the next thing we looked at was zeta potential. Um, for our purpose, we we're really just seeing how the individual particles behave at certain pH levels. And we we're looking at heterogeneous samples, uh, being the Nankai and Shale because those aren't very often studied and we just wanted to see how those samples would behave. So the first one we have here is the shale and we actually got a better trend than we expected out of this. It being heterogeneous, we expected the values of zeta potential to drop or you know, not have a nice trend line like this does. As you can see, at lower pH levels we have a lower zeta and as the pH increases, so does the zeta potential value. The Nankai doesn't have that same trend but overall, the, uh, the deviation between the actual points isn't very much. And so we were happy with these results because it didn't show um, real steep drops in those data values. Uh, the main difference between these two samples is their clay content. So Nankai having a higher clay content is why we think that this value didn't develop as nice of a trend as the shale did. Uh, finally, we wanted to compare those heterogeneous to a homogeneous sample like sandstone. Uh, sandstone is a little bit better studied, and we know a little bit more about that rock just by reading through literature. As you can see here, at around the 7 uh, pH mark, it jumps down to about 4 and takes a steep drop in zeta value. And the reason we think this happens is at around this pH level is when hydroxide ions start interacting with these silicon ions. And due to that, negativity of the hydroxide ion attaching to the silicon, we think it results in an overall net charge drop in those values. So overall, our information um, turned out a little bit better than the, with the zeta potential than we expected, and we hope that people will be able to use this in incorporating it into computer simulations. Thank you.